Um, well, yes, play? Laddams is playing and not Hayes. Laddams is in. Was yeah. it a tough call? Yeah, it was. Really tough call. Both boys are in really good form. We think Pete's um, you know, played some AFL football at level. We're really keen to give Sam an opportunity at the right time. And uh, we just felt today was the right moment for Pete Laddams to get another go. Well, um, obviously out for four weeks. Is there a chance Sam could come in? Through yeah, we'd, we'd, um, you know, we're we're pretty bullish about our young players and we like to play them when we can so there's an opportunity over the next four or five weeks obviously and um, you know for, for Sam to, to stay in good form and for Pete to hold his end of the bargain up so we, we wouldn't be frightened to um, you know to swap them around if we need to but we're really confident Pete's in good form. Did the occasions such as the match against the Bulldogs also demand you have a more experienced grassman in there? No not really because I mean I mean what are we talking about 10 games or something so we're not not talking about massively difference in experience we, we just decided on based on the types of matchups that we think we might get, the, the flexibility that Laddams can also provide us if we need it. Dan Houston, yes or no? No, Dan's not playing, uh, so Riley Bonner will come in for Dan. Are they the only changes? Yeah. What's, um, is Dan looking at an extended period of time? Is he in surgery? It's just a rest? No, no, it's just a rest. I mean, look, he needs, he probably needs one, maybe two. We'll, we'll wait, we won't, we won't force that issue until we know, but normally with the injuries that they have, that Dan has, it's, it's probably just getting two weeks in between opportunities it'll probably be okay I'd imagine but I'll wait and see. Can you know that every week we measure where everyone's at? Particularly yeah we do. Table. So Port the Western Bulldogs, TV3, what's that result going to say about the big picture? Uh, it's not, I don't think it'll say, look, it'll say something I'm not sure exactly how much it'll say it's it's round nine I mean we, we make all these predictions and all these bold statements every, after every round and you know someone tomorrow is going to win and hopefully that's us but um, you know if, if it's the Bulldogs well we won't say that much we'd all say that you know you've got to improve whichever side gets the job done and then we know the next opportunity you play the sides will be totally different the teams will be totally different you know we actually get a chance to play the Bulldogs again later in the year so look it's, it's just too early to make too many big predictions around anyone I don't think in, in the competition. The other famous line is, is always decided in the midfield they've got a very deep midfield. Haven't very good. How do you feel about matching up against them in that area? You know, we're really comfortable and confident that our best is also as, as good as, as they've got. And, you know, we've got um, some great quality out there ourselves. We've got, we know we, if we talk names for names, we've got Trav and, you know, we've got Ollie, we've got people, Robbie Gray, we've got Connor Rosie, we've got plenty of players that can go through there ourselves, you know, and, and Will and Drew. Uh, so I think we've got, I think Bulldogs will be looking at our midfield and, and having as many concerns as we have about theirs. They've got Pontempelli, do you have to think twice about how you handle it? Yeah, we'd like to hope he doesn't um, get as dominant as he was last week. But um, you know, he's a great player. They great players play well, and you know, you've just got to control them as best you possibly can, and we'll control him as well as we can. Hopefully, that we cause him as many problems that they're looking to control some of ours. Is Pontemps one of those players that he does go forward potentially as a matchup for Burton? Yeah, he could be. I mean, that's right. I mean, he's a big person to go forward. He's not just a normal midfielder that goes forward. So, you know, we've got plenty down there that can handle him. I think you could play tall, tall on him. You could play Lear on him. You could play Jonas on him. You could play Burton on him. You know, the good thing about our defence, it's quite flexible as well. And obviously with the Easter management issue, Ken making sure he's okay week to week. Yeah, it's just getting through and being able to play. We've well, seen what happened last week. He copped another hit last week, which is a hit on a hit. So, you know, there's a point where you go, oh, this is this is just hitting a bit too much. So we'll we'll put a bit of a break in the traffic and freshen him up and get him a bit better and um, physically he can come out and play because we know he's a really important part of our team. Is that something that would need perhaps an operation in the year? No, no, you know, I don't think so. It's quite a simple. It's a collision injury that, given three weeks without a hit, it's probably perfect. But AFL footy doesn't give you too many weeks without a hit. Can how do you find managing? what it is after a showdown, a high pitch showdown, everyone's built up and then the week after, how do you handle that? Oh, I know, it's next week of AFL football, you've got to be ready for it and you've got to get move on and, um, you know, the competition demands you get ready again. We've got, as you said, um, we've got we've got the second side on the ladder, it's pretty easy to um, get yourself focused again and get back on track, every side has to and, you know, showdowns are great, we all, we all acknowledge how great they are, but both sides I'm sure would be pretty quick to, you have to move on by Tuesday to the next game. Oh, not, look, for me to, to decide what's fair and what's not fair, I don't, I don't want to buy into that conversation, but I think we're protecting the head and we should protect the head. Scott knew that he'd done the wrong thing, he didn't, he didn't challenge the charge too much. I mean, the, the number of games is, a, is a determined by the tribunal, respect that, we'll play with that. Can't be for someone like Tom Fleury, how impressive is it that you brought in a, you know, another key defender and he rose to the challenge, I guess, and now playing as good as we've seen? Yeah, Tom's been a really consistent player for us now for a few years and um, 
you know, he's uh, he's mature and he's he's played over 100 games for AFL footy. He's you know he's probably in his sweet spot of his football career, and um, I hope it continues for three or four more years for him. Um, with the mid-season draft, is there any kind of player that you would like to see for target with it at the moment? No, well, again, that's that, I mean, it's a job for our list management and our recruiters to make sure they're all over what the opportunities look like and when we when we do and don't use them. So I'll, uh, I'll concentrate on the games at hand at the moment and let them take care of that. Oh, look, I'm, I'm certainly going to have some, some discussions around it, but whether it's a decision that we need to make or not need to make based on the season where it is now, we'd like to have good information before we just go in and pick someone. Can this is a game where Western Bulldogs and Port Adelaide show that they've made the most of the new rules and the ability to create run into space? I think both sides like to um, you know create with the ball and they like to be quite quick with the ball and their ability to get the ball from inside to out is is elite. Ours ours is also pretty good, so it's going to be a, it'll be a cracking game. I know that. I mean, let's hope the conditions are uh, are pretty good and uh, you know you should see a, a, a great game of AFL football. I think two sides who are got some wheels and got some talent out there that are um, you know pretty desperate to do well against each other. Did you turn on the sprinklers yesterday morning? No, no, no. Um, they just managed to malfunction for us. It's oh, okay. perfect the way that works. Ah, look. Yeah, he's a remarkably upbeat, which, as you said, he's, he's, a, he's a fantastic person over around your footy club. He's full of enthusiasm, and look, he's dealt with some difficulties over the last couple of weeks. But you know, um, most importantly, he's, he's on the road to recovery, and that's that's the important part. And Rock will be back bigger and better than he's ever been, I reckon, with his enthusiasm around the football club. But we just got to play it by uh, you know day by day a little bit with how this process works out for him because it's a pretty significant injury. Well, illness. You know, the injuries are there, but he's also got the other issues. So. Yeah, Zach's, Zach's um, you know, we released through the week where Zach's at. He's, um, you know, he's, he's got some restrictions with what he's able to do. He's not ready to go. He's, you know, he's, he's away from being ready to go. So we're just going to continually build. It'll be a bit of a slow build for us. As much as we can, we'll keep him informed. But at the moment, it's a day by day. And, and it literally is a day by day with how, how his leg behaves. And once it starts to behave well, the, in, the information we have is it'll be quite quick. But we don't know when it's going to be.